Hey folks, okay, here we go again. Uh, before we get into actually looking at writing some code, I want to talk about the software development process in general, give you a kind of a bit of context, a bit of overview. Um, and this is going to be very general and the, the world of software development is so complex and there are so many different things going on that this by no means encompasses everything in software development, but it just gives you a kind of a starting point. So we all have the same general idea of what we're talking about before we get into some specifics and before we actually start trying to solve some problems and write some code. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the need for understanding this process first off. I want to take a look at the sort of the life cycle of a typical software project. What, what does a one software product look like from the moment somebody gets an idea to the time it's actually um, obsolete, if you like? Then from that, I want to go. What, I want to narrow it down and talk about just what we're going to look at in this course, because of course, an introductory programming course, we're only going to look at a little tiny piece of this. Then I'll talk very briefly about where some of the later courses in computer science are likely to take you. And, sorry, lots of uh, background noise here. And I want to talk about the fact that uh, if you don't like learning, this might not be a good business for you, possibly. Uh, in this business, you know, things change so fast that you're never going to be done studying and you're never going to be done learning. So that's more or less what I want to run through in the next little while. Um, in terms of why understand software development in general, I mean, if you're planning on being in this business, it's a no-brainer, right? If you're planning on being a software developer or if you're planning on uh, working in you know, sort of anything that's related to software development, obviously you've got to understand what's going on. You've got to understand the business. You've got to understand the processes. If you see yourself more as, well, I don't really want to write this stuff, but I want to manage people who do, then again, obviously you have to understand what's going on and you have to understand the processes and you've got to have a good grasp of what's involved in it so that you can manage these things effectively. And even if you don't plan on any of this, if you're more or less just thinking, oh, okay, well, I wanted to get a bit of an introduction to uh, computing and programming and see what it's all about, then even as a user, it's still very likely that you're gonna be impacted significantly by somebody else's software development process, right? Whether you're working for a company and they bring in somebody to go through and design custom software for you, or if you're a user that's trying to give feedback on somebody on software that you're trying to use, or you're, you know, you've got a beta of something that, uh, that you're playing with and you want to go through and give feedback on it. It makes a lot more sense if you understand the process that they're going through on the development side. If you can understand what they're talking about and what they're looking at and how they're seeing things, then it makes it much easier to interact with the people who are doing the development itself. So these are all things that, uh, that you should have a bit of a grasp on. And again, I wanted to take a look at just one sample lifespan, you know, from the, the moment somebody gets the idea for some new product until its lifetime is over and it's, you know, consigned to the, the garbage bin of history. You know, this is gonna begin with somebody realizing that we need something better. There needs to be a change, there needs to be a new product, there needs to be something different. What we're doing now isn't good enough or could be better. So who knows who gets that idea, right? It's, it's typically going to be um, a user, somebody with a bright idea that goes, you know what? I don't like the way this works. It would be better if. And so sometimes that's coming from somebody who is actually a software developer and they've got some ideas on how to make it better. But often it's just coming from the perspective of somebody who uses this thing and knows there's gotta be a better way. So they have to start talking to people who can actually do the development and try and find somebody who can make this change happen in a practical way, in a feasible way. So that next step is figuring out if this new thing is actually feasible. You know, is the benefit gonna be worth the cost? Um, are there risks associated with it? What are the timelines gonna be like? Is it gonna take us 10 years to do this by which time it won't be useful anyways? Right. So there is this, this whole next step of figuring out if it's worth doing, if it's practical to do. 
Then you have to figure out, okay, well, what exactly is it we're going to build? You usually start off with this kind of vague idea or general idea about, I want something, I want a game that looks like this, or I want a change that does blah. But that's usually pretty general. If we're talking about an existing software product, then we have to figure out what that means in terms of the guts of the code, what has to happen inside to make that happen. And we have to decide exactly what it is we want. We have to get precise, right? Somebody can't build what you want unless you can tell them very clearly what you want, exactly what you want. If you just give somebody a ballpark idea of what you want, then they're going to go in with their own assumptions and their own preconceptions, and they're going to make their own decisions as they go through and design, oh, well, they probably want it to be like this. They probably want, you know, this button over here and this icon over here. And when this happens, they want an error message like this. You know, they want prompts like this. They want it to look like this. They want it to be this fast, this slow. If you don't tell the developer these things, then they're going to make up their own mind on it, and it might not turn out to be what you want. So you have to go through this process of figuring out exactly what that might be. Now, sometimes that happens up front where we decide exactly what we want up front and turn it over to the developer and say, there, make it happen. Or sometimes it's an iterative process where we go through and as they go through the process of designing and developing something, they're asking us questions and saying, well, would you like this or that? Would you like this or that? Should it be this way or this way? Or they show you something and say, is this the way you want it? And you say, oh, no, 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 I'd much rather it be somewhere else. So one way or another, you've got to go through this process of figuring out what should happen. What should the exact features be? Now, if you go through and figure out in advance exactly what you want, then you're typically going to sit down and plan out the project, figure out when things are going to happen, how it's going to go along. Right? But you do have to go through this process of planning, even if it's an iterative thing where we're going back and forth and trying things and changing them and trying things and changing them. You still have to have some kind of a plan for managing that. Right? Big software projects are big money. They're expensive. They involve a lot of people. And so you can't just kind of wing it. So again, Typically, there's going to be a stage where you're designing a new solution or designing the next step in our new solution. We have to actually build it, debug it, right? test it, make sure it actually works. And then we have to actually deploy it. Right? The developer is not usually working on the user's machine when they're developing this. Right? They're developing it on their own machines, their own systems. And then eventually, you have to deploy it to the target user base, to the, the company or the user, and um, get it up and running on their systems and then maintain it until eventually, somewhere down the road, it's uh, no longer effective and it gets replaced by something else. So yeah, just running through this, I think I've babbled through most of this, but uh, that's the general idea we want to take a look at. And for Computer Science 160, for this first course in programming and software development, we're just going to narrow that down. Instead of talking about this entire process, I want to focus on just this idea of if somebody's given us a description of what it is they want, then let's see if we can design a solution, build it, debug it, and test it to make sure it works. So those are really the, the, the things that we're interested in taking a look at, is this kind of design and build, debug, and test. And again, for the most part in 160, we're going to start with very small one-person projects, something that you can do in the space of you know a couple of weeks, assuming that you know you've got full course load in other courses, so it's not like two weeks full time. It's uh, we're taking very small steps in the beginning. Um, again, in the beginning, for the most part, I'm going to tell you what it is I want you to create, and then your problem is to go through design a way to make that happen, build it, debug it, and test your solution. Now, to get there, we need fluency in whatever programming language we're going to use. Uh, for this course, this semester, we're using C++, and we'll talk about the, the reasons for that later, but uh, that's the language we're going with right now. And again, we want to get through the basic design skills, basic coding skills, and developing good programming habits. So that's kind of where we're going for this course. Then in later courses, you'll expand to cover, cover all the other areas. In the short term, the rest of the, the sort of first year for this program, you'll have a second course in programming where it kind of picks up where we leave off and gets into more programming details, more design issues, more problem solving issues. 
Uh, we've got a second year or first year topics course that goes through and tries to give you an idea of what the major areas of computer science are and give you a bit of an introduction to each of them. Then in second year, you get deeper into everything. You get deeper into the software design process. You get into the interaction between hardware and software. Uh, you get into the way systems are actually managed. Uh, you get much deeper into the management of data and data structures to handle all the information that has to be worked with. And then in the third and fourth year, we dive into very specific areas and go much deeper into each of those. You know, computer theory, language theory, uh, networking, operating systems, uh, hardware architecture, artificial intelligence, machine learning, developing good user interfaces, all that sort of thing comes in the, uh, the third and fourth year. And again, as I mentioned a, a little bit earlier, you're never done learning in this field, right? Obviously, this field is constantly, quickly growing and evolving. And if you plan on making a career in this area, then you are going to be adapting for the rest of your career. You're going to be learning new things. You're going to be picking up new skills. You're going to be learning new languages. You're going to be learning new techniques. You're going to be learning new systems. Right? It's going to happen for the rest of your career. And you pretty much have to be able to, you know, once you leave this place, you have to be able to teach yourself all of these new languages and new skills and new systems. You know, once in a while, a company will send you someplace for a course for a, a week or something like that on, uh, on you know, picking up the, the fundamentals of a particular new system or a new technique or whatever it might be. But for the most part, you're going to be self-teaching after you leave this place. And so one of the things that we want to try and do is help you develop the skills so that you can continually teach yourself these new systems and new languages and new skills. And so in this course, uh, we kind of very much guide you through the, the, the learning process for this. You know, maybe in second year, there's a little bit more independence where we leave a, little, a few more things for you to pick up on your own. And then with each successive year, there's more and more that you're expected to pick up on your own. Now, the thing is, there are there's overlap between the different languages and different systems and different techniques. Once you learn one programming language, you've probably learned 70% of what you'll need to pick up for another programming language. It's just picking up the differences, what's different between the first language and the second one. Once you pick up a third language, that one's going to have overlap with both of the previous ones you know. And so each time you learn a new language, it's actually easier and easier to pick up on new ones. Right? It, uh, it gives you a better base for moving on and learning new things. And the same happens with systems and skills and techniques. Every new technique you learn gives you some insight into future techniques that you're going to learn, future systems that you're going to learn. It does get easier and easier to teach yourself these new things and to pick up these new things. Now, it's not to say that the new things you pick up are going to be trivial. Some of them are going to be pretty demanding, but you are going to develop the confidence and the ability to teach yourself this stuff by the time you get out of here. Hopefully, that's uh, uh, that's our goal. If, we're, if we don't if we don't get there, then uh, then. I don't feel like we've done our job properly either. All right, I will leave that there, and uh, maybe next time around we can get into looking at some systems.